Welcome to Sojourns, and to a story that was mostly recorded in Sai Baba's ashram in India in 1983. A story narrated by Sai Baba's personal biographer, Professor Narayana Kasturi. That is what Swami says. This is my calling card, he says. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. This is actually two stories in one. First, it is the story of Sai Baba, as told by Professor Kasturi, that will be seen later in its entirety. Some people ask Swami, Swami, you must, when you come to Delhi, you must come to my, my place. Oh, you have got a place? Is that your place? Uh, no, Swami, it is, excuse me, it is our place. Oh, half and half. <laughs> No, Swami, it is your place. Then why should you invite me? <laughs> what right have you to invite me to my place? <laughs> Swami then gives walks all through the Port of Chandra. He's not any, letting anybody touch his feet. And this is also the story of Jack Lenchner, the longtime Sai Baba devotee from New York who filmed Professor Kasturi back in 1983, who tells of that encounter and with his own encounters with Sai Baba. He's not any, letting anybody touch his feet on that particular day. I don't know why. When he came up to me, I had no camera. I was just there. He allowed me to kiss his feet. Well, he knew you were coming. I, I, I'm just saying, he allowed me to kiss his feet and I was so grateful, obviously, but I've never kissed anybody's feet. This is all new to me. You know, this is my second trip to India. And I go back to my room, David and his fiance and somebody else is in that room. We're all sharing a little room in Prashanti Nilium. And I fall asleep and I wake up three hours later. <laughs> and when I awaken in my room, in David's room, Castori's in the room. Is he really? And he's there reciting poetry. The legendary Professor Kasturi. Is in the room after I awaken after three hours of being solid asleep. And you had never met and, him before. No. This is all new, brand new. And, and, and he's doing poetry. He's reciting poetry. It's so beautiful, man. <laughs> anyway, this is October 1977. Well, let me say that we talked about Castori. I thought he was extraordinary. I just, I just loved him so much. And 1976 was my first visit on April 23rd. It's going to be my Sai Baba birthday uh, in a few days. Sure. Uh, that's the first time Swami spoke to me. Uh, we've covered that story in the past, but a year later, in 1977, I'm invited to go to India on October for Dasara. Uh, was friends of mine that were going to get married, and they wanted me to be the best man. Mm -hmm. David Hearn Thomas in, and Virginia. And I'm in their apartment, and I'm in the room talking to Swami, in the other room of their apartment. I say, Swami, give me thy darshan, thy truth, thy darshan, thy proof. Just then, <laughs> David in the other room says, Jack, you're coming with us to India in two days. Do you want a Western meal or a veggie? Uh, this is after seconds after I said, Swami, give me thy darshan, thy proof, thy darshan, thy truth. Uh -huh. I'm invited to go to India. So David invites me to come as his best man. He's going to be married by, by Swami. He wants to be married by Swami. And uh, it's Dasara. Get to India and Dasara. You know what it's like to travel from New York all the way to India, but I don't stop. I just keep going directly to Swami. If something's moving in his direction, I... I hang on there. And the first day in, in that particular day was an all day of chanting, chanting, chanting. You know what it's like to fly that far. Yeah. And the last prayer of the chanting on that October day of Dasra, the prayer was, that's still in my heart today, Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. Well, what kind of a man was he uh, informally? Uh, he was... He was... Like Swami, what, what what could you expect from? I mean, Kasturi was 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 
so kind and loving and gentle and humble as the beginning editor of the Sanatata Sarati, he was just, I don't know, I, 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 you know when you love a baby, you know, I mean, he was just, he was just such, so adorable and loving and kind and humble and articulate. Uh, <laughs> I mean, anything I say is going to not be up to who he really is and was. <laughs> Uh, but that's how I felt. I, I had so many interactions with him over the time. When I used to videotape him giving talks to the Westerners, he would look at me and he would say, okay, Lechner, do your worst. <laughs> do your worst. <laughs> In other words, it was just just be authentic. Did he treat you, know you I mean? as a Westerner as, uh, as well as he treated uh, fellow Indians and people from Europe well, and elsewhere I, around the world? He was always loving to me. I mean... I, I, one of the amazing experiences that I had once, uh, it's New Year's Eve mm -hmm. in Prashanti Nilayam, and I'm complaining to Swami, which I often did, Shh. I said, we celebrate the New Year, Swami, and there's nothing happening here now. <laughs> and, and I'm talking to Swami inwardly in my heart. Uh -huh. And so then, then I'm walking back to my room, and there's Kastori. He says, Lenchener, my wife is not well. Now, Kastori's apartment was 40 feet from Swami's wow. <laughs> Mandir. <laughs> 40 feet mm -hmm. from Prashanti Nilium. And Kastori says to me, my wife is not well. She hasn't been able to get Swami's darshan. Do you think you could bring your little TV and give her Swami's darshan. <laughs> New Year's New Year's Eve. Uh -huh. So, and I have trouble some carrying sometimes. So I, I get this guy from the Manhattan Center. I said, "Would you help me carry this monitor into?" This? And he helps me. And so we go into Castori's room. His wife is in bed, lying down. I set up the little TV next to her head, mm -hmm. and the other man helping me is the other side of the room. And at the end of the bed, Kastori sits on the floor as I sit next to him. He puts his arm over my shoulder as we watch Swami's darshan for his wife oh. on a five-inch little screen. Because there's nothing, no greater sure. gift than serving someone like Kastori when his wife is not well yeah. by giving him Swami's darshan on the videotape. It sounds like he was uh, like a grandfather, maybe even a father to you, Jack. Well, Swami is like uh, Kastori. I, I don't know how I think about these different things. Uh, I think it's almost an innocence, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we, which, it's just gratitude to be able to be of service. Whatever we're doing for somebody else is really coming back to us. You know, it's all, you saw me say this forever. And it's really, it's really true. He was just, he was just, um, he was just a light. I don't know. How, uh, how could I limit? Any him idea any how or why Baba chose him to be such a, uh, uh, Save a doll for him, a uh, person of selfless service but forever and ever. That, I, I, that's a whole. You're asking me questions that would go into like I know. I, I I would have Swami say that, not me saying why. All I know is well. The qualities that he had was number one. He was extremely intelligent. Mm -hmm. He was extremely kind and humble and compassionate. He was he was. I mean, he was editing the Son of Sarati. He wrote his last book, you know. I videotaped him with his son, encouraging Kastori to write his life story before he passed away. And his son, sitting at his floor, this is on one of the tapes that I released on sidecast.org, his son passes away. I rode with him, and we shared Swami rings, and, and that's before Kastori wrote his last book. Innocence, just innocence and, and surrender and service and love. You know what I've always said is, uh, show me a man, show me a woman, show me anybody who's got lots of compassion, humility, love, and almost nil ego, and I'll be happy to follow them for the rest of my life. And it sounds like, and there aren't too many walking the earth, it sounds like he might fit that category. He, 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 uh, 
he's more than that category. He, <laughs> he, he was just the sweetest. Uh, uh, just to tie this up, I was allowed, as I you know before, to be handling, to organize, to serve the overseas videographers, photographers, mm -hmm. and, and filmmakers at Swami's feet. At the 65th birthday, it was there was 40 days of no of dust and rain, and I say to Swami, Swami, I. You have so many people, like a million people uh, from all over the world. I know you won't have time to give me an interview. I say this morning, but the least you can do on the day that I leave, I'm not knowing when I'm leaving when I'm saying this, you can have it rain so any water that I may have wasted <laughs> will return to the wells, the dust will settle, and the plants will grow. Now you're talking to them in your heart at this point. In my right? heart. Yeah, okay. It's, it's the quickest way, I'll tell you. It's the <laughs> shortest distance and there's no toll. Toll <laughs> charges. No toll. So I'm talking to Swami in the heart. And then a month later, after I say this, uh, Bob Bazzani is my next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. And he comes in to say goodbye. Al Levy comes over mm -hmm. to say goodbye to me. And they say, and, and Bob Bazzani says, did you get an interview? I said, no, but Swami's got people from all over. I just asked him, could you have it rain when I leave? Just so I know, you know. So basically what I'm saying is that Swami... His story, when I left that year, 80, uh, 65th birthday, uh -huh. when I left, I somehow felt that I wasn't going to see his story again alive. Ah. I felt I was not going to see him alive. I used to go every year, part of every year I'd be in Prashanti Nilium for all those years. So when I left that day, it started to rain. <laughs> After 40 days of no rain, it started to rain. That must have felt so good, number one, and you must have felt Baba was uh, two I, inches from I, your heart. I was just, I was inwardly crying. Sure. Because once again, Swami is hearing our every wish, our every prayer, whether we realize it or not, yeah. for all of us, not for this guy, not for this jack out of the box. But I also thought, that I wasn't going to see his story alive again. And did you? The next year, when I would usually come, I did not go. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel that I would see him alive again. And as I came back, not a, a year and a half later, as I landed in Bombay, his story was taking Samadhi. Mm -hmm. On that day, yeah. And he was in the hospital, and I got to see him in the hospital. I didn't know when I was coming to Prashanti that he had passed that morning. So he had passed that, before you had a chance to see him in the hospital. I did not see him alive, as yeah. I, and that's why I did not come back that next year, because I did not want to, if I did, I, this is just what I said to myself, who knows if it's true. Basically, then he was cremated in the Chichubati River. Mm -hmm. Now you want to know what year this was? Okay. It was during my 50th birthday. I was 50 years old. Wow. And how old are you today? You must be 77 uh, or in I'll, 78. I'll, no, I'll, be eight, I'll be 80 in July 13th. Well, happy birthday in advance. Thank you. Well, April 23rd is my birthday, the first time Swami spoke to me. Yeah, that's your so real birthday. I, April 23rd is the first time he spoke to me. So, and at the Chichibati River, they cremated Kastori. And this is on the videos. We mm -hmm. have this. There was nobody photographing or videotaping. And a man that I was with said that I was almost going into the fire with my camera. Oh, boy. I mean, oh boy. I, I loved him so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, you know, yeah. but... Jack, you've got a, a wealth of information and great stories. I want to thank you so very, very much. We promise you'll, you'll hang around for another decade or so so we can pry another 25 stories from you. Yes, with one addition. Yeah. On Christmas morning, on this ring, Ooh. on Swami's forehead, a cross appeared. Oh, that's wonderful. Is, Put that up a little bit closer is, to the camera on your... There, yeah, I can is, see it. He's always playing with us if we're yeah. open to just... Isn't that a delight when you know that that's happening? 
Well, you're one of, you're one of the luckiest men alive, Jack, and I'm so happy we, for we're, you. We're we're all we're all lucky. Yeah, the difference I, is I, you I, know I, you're lucky. You the difference is you know you're being well, treated like a little toy poodle, puppy dog. I'm Jack out of the box. What is my box? But my ego, who I think I am. What does it mean to be in the box, who you might think I am? What does it mean to be out of the box? Yeah. Just watch the unfolding drama, not taking any of it personally. Just watch and enjoy. <laughs> Jack, I hope at 79, going on 80, I have your youthful exuberance when I grow up. <laughs> Sai Rob, love you. When people say I love you, I say you'll get over it. <laughs> There'll be just love. Well, this know is, you or I. This is, by the way, from Sojourns to Jack Lenchner, a very happy birthday, 80th birthday. Now, this is the video shot of Professor Ancasturi on December 20th, 1983, in Prashanti Nilayam, of the Annunciation poem as it's titled, a wonderful talk by Professor Kasturi in its entirety, 56 minutes long. Also, Jack is interested in knowing if anybody would like to add subtitles to this video. If so, just send your desire to do so to Sojourns at Sojourns9 at AOL.com. Cyber. <laughs>
we have come to the ananda stage and then the silence that follows even that uh, hum is the real thing in that silence we will have to discover in that silence resides divinity our real divinity so this om has got a number of meanings like that and that is why the essence of all philosophy and thought and spiritual practice is this sound om and that's why it is written in a number of scripts on this gopra the full moon hall the punchandra auditorium the full moon hall where all the gods that ever man had heard do congregate to witness him you will see under every pillar in that punchandra auditorium some form of god sitting petrified of course <laughs> sitting as if sitting waiting for baba to come for the avatar to come but they know the avatar because they are all forms of god who men never do out of centuries and they are curious to know who is this divine personality that the world is now adoring so they are all waiting 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 each one uh, uh, already appropriating a pillar for himself or herself and uh, awaiting the chance that is what it appears to me the full moon hall where all the gods that ever man adored do congregate to witness him the pillar proclaims what he has come to teach all faiths are facets of the truth you can kneel or turn away guess him formless or with form or see him serve him in man and beast and plant you can even worship a plant a tulsi or a tree as they do near the tiger gate you got a tree there which is worshiped they be say vishnu resides in your trunk brahma resides in your root shiva resides in your fruit so we in no call they do that god is really in the tree without god the tree can't grow god resides in the worm god resides in the microbe god resides in the virus god resides everywhere man bird beast tree plant and therefore you can serve him in a plant or in a tree or in a bird sai is the journey's end whichever path you tread he is the guide the god the goal the nilayam is the lab where the alchemist turns leaden hearts to bangaru formerly the alchemist used to convert lead into gold bangaru is gold and baba's fondest expression is bangaru so far as we are concerned once it happened that uh, i got into some trouble excuse me keep it confidential please <laughs> <laughs> something happened and uh, baba wanted to teach me a lesson and therefore he he didn't keep me away but he, he didn't uh, notice me or talk to me or uh, recognize me at all as being alive and before him <laughs> now that is the worst punishment that you can have the worst test the hottest crucible in which you can be put you are there right before him standing near the wall and as if you are simply brick and mortar and nothing else 
<laughs> and he will pass up and down a number of times and you may plead, Swami, 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 a number of times, but he is deaf to all your appeals. Like that it went on for about ten days, twelve days, and it was a terrible experience. And then one day, <clears throat> when I couldn't bear it any longer, so I broke down and then Swami said, ah, what is all this? There's nothing. Go. <laughs> that was something. So, of course, Swami said, there's nothing. Why are you worrying like this? No, 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 nothing. Go. Go, he said. Now, of course, it was satisfactory that at last he had spoken to me, recognized me, and uh, said at least some things. But I wasn't quite pleased. Anyway, I got down the steps and bhajan was going on. So I moved right up to this Gopuram, because there was no Gopuram then, but came up so far as that. And then I poured out all my sorrow through my eyes. And then uh, I went back. And Baba had not yet uh, finished the bhajan and gone up. So I somehow smuggled myself into that room, what is called the interview room, so that uh, when he comes and tries to go up, he could see me once again with a melancholy face. <laughs> but. Uh, he didn't notice me at all. <laughs> he simply went up and I followed him the steps. Then I stood before him. And then he was surprised that this fellow is still having a melancholy face. <laughs> I spoken to him and I asked him to go. Why is he coming up again? So he said, why? What's the matter? Why again? Why still? Then I said, Swami, you didn't pat me on the back and, and say Bangaru. <laughs> Bangaru means cancelling of all that has happened. New chapter. And Swami took compassion on me and he said, Come, come here. And I have big whack on my back. <laughs> and Ah, oh, Bangar and Bangar. So that Bangaru is a, is a word that we long to learn from him. So leaden hearts, my heart for example, he turns leaden hearts into Bangaru. It is an ashram where the Sadguru brings back to life the drooping and the dead. Because many of us are dead, dead to generosity, dead to love, dead to compassion. We are alive, of course, but we are dead to the clamor of the poor, to the groans of the sick. We are dead. We don't hear. All the drooping and the dead, these people, his palm, we you know, has the balm. His palm has the balm for the drooping and the dead. It is a workshop. It's a laboratory. This is an ashram. This is a workshop where he sets aright all broken hearts. They come here. And he sets aright and mends the damaged mind. It is a school. That's why the, the school became a university. It started as a school. And even now the university is a part of this school, an extension of this school. It's a school where we learn a few more Ds. In the alphabet we have got only one D. But Baba teaches us three Ds. <coughs> Duty, devotion and discipline. Three Ds. So when we come to A, B, C, D, then Swami says, no, wait, 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 there are two more Ds. Three Ds in this alphabet, in this school. And extra Fs, we've got four Fs here, in Atmic alphabet, where arithmetic is upside down. 
in this school you learn arithmetic upside down <laughs> where 3 minus 1 is 1 <laughs> that is swami says we have got man and the creation or nature and god <clears throat> now this creation and nature is only an extension of our mind it is our mind that has conceived of all this mentalism it is called and when you remove the creation the illusion of the world there is only god and who is god that is also your creation you are part of god i am i am god and you are god so you are in me and i am in you so there is only one so 3 minus 1 if you take away the creation you come only one a big metaphysical arithmetic <laughs> and i plus i plus i plus i plus 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 all of you each one of you calls yourself i now every all this i plus 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 and i plus i plus i plus i add up to single i not four or forty or fifty all our parts of god therefore that is the arithmetic that we learned here now so these are for people who are coming for the first time take your seat on the darshan line and fold your palms and minds you got to fold not only the palms that is physical exercise one two one two physical exercise fold your minds folding the palm is the indication these are the five sense organs and these are the five organs of action organs of perception and these five put together and offered to whatever we receive through the senses whatever we act through the organs of action we offer to you that is why baba says these minds are folded not merely palms be that you when you sit in the darshan line be that you to hate and pride farewell to envy greed picture is lovely form and pray for darshan sparshan touching and sambhashan that he might utter a word or two to you three blessings he has come to give so <coughs> swami says that these three blessings <coughs> seeing touching and hearing his voice he has come to give that because so there is a whole story which he tells us you know during the days of rama he killed a large number of demons poor things and the class they clamored and said what is you you have uh, destroyed our lives but and we have only obeyed our master ravana and we fought for him so loyally and he died in your hands so what is going to happen to us <coughs> you must save us now and then it seems rama said because it's all a joke more or less <laughs> swami enjoys jokes so he said to those demons ah you come during the kali age i will be coming <laughs> and it is at that invitation that we all come <laughs> <laughs> and you will be saved then you require it seems he told those demons you require three triple treatment some some rishis and others they simply saw they had darshan and they were saved some had sparshan and they were saved some heard the voice and they were saved but you are such a deep rooted uh, wickedness in you that uh, come at that time and i'll give you all three internal medicine 
external application and uh, control of diet and other things. So these three he has come to give. In one poem that he sang before one of his discourses, he mentioned this. I have come because I have promised the demons that I will <laughs> save them again. <laughs> anyway, it is good that we don't remember our past. <laughs> Forgetting is a great gift given by God to us. And then, lo, there he, there he is, the orange robe, the flash, the flame, the fragrant breeze, sunlit, hollow hair, fulfillment of every golden dream, all the gods in sai form, grace, majesty, joy and charm. This is Shiva Shakti, Krishna, Ram. Jehovah, Buddha, Jesus Christ, clasp those lotus feet. Hold the softness of the touch. It will keep you soft forevermore. His feet are so soft. Hold the softness of the touch. You touch it, it is so soft. Don't uh, allow it to that feeling of softness, don't allow it to escape you. Hold on to it. Keep it in your heart. Then what will happen to your heart? It will soften your heart also. It will keep you soft forevermore. You won't be a hard-hearted person. Once you feel the softness of those feet, that's why he attaches so much importance to sparsen, the touch. Very often he comes before a person and says, ah, chase coke. All right, have it. So he offers the feet so that you might get soft in the heart. Watch. His finger bids you rise, bids you wake, because you are dozing. <laughs> Even though you may be alert, it is dozing that you are doing. You are not fully alert. You are not fully alert. You are simply intoxicated with uh, worldly things. <coughs> you are not alert to your responsibility, alert to your duty. You don't awake to your real self. The call is there. You are not awake. You don't hear it. That's why in the Purushas it is said, Muktishta. Get up, Jagrata, wait, and go to the person who will lead you. So watch his finger, bid you wake. You are chosen. Ah, you are chosen. Swami is going to give you the interview. You are chosen, dear child. Follow him. Blessed is the day, the hour. You will be born anew. What is going to happen to you is you will be born anew. This, up to this moment, you had some type of life. A new life is going to begin for you. You will be born anew. And who you are, he, and then what happens inside the interview room, there is a kind of the workshop. You have entered the workshop. And Swami says, you come here merely as a kind of a vintage car, very much damaged, you won't proceed at all. And Swami says, I'll change the engine, I'll change the brake. Brake we haven't got at all. <laughs> Somebody complained, what, your brake is not working, but that doesn't matter, I've got a good horn. <laughs> Most of us operate only on horns <laughs> and no brake. So this uh, workshop, he puts the brake, he puts the, the everything else and then he fills all the tires and makes the spring quite all right and the balance and then paints new and then ah, it moves out of the workshop 
fresh, new, capable of journeying throughout life happily and without any danger. That is, that is once what he explained his role to be. So let us see what happens to us when we go and yield ourselves to him. He spring cleans, he spring cleans the junk that clutters the brain and who you are and why is clear in the light. He dots his vibhuti on ajna's pot. This is according to yoga, very important uh, place in the Kundalini yoga. Ajna chakra it is called. It is the headquarters of the commander in chief who gives all the orders for the spiritual powers to arouse. And he touches that and puts himself on it. That is to say his vibhuti, which is himself. Unveil is the eye. Unveil is the eye. We have all got veils in the eye. And our eyes see people as different. We see only the color, we see only the religion, we see only the economic condition, we see only the poverty, we see people as different. Your eye has got to be cured, unveils the eye, afflicted with multiple sight. Our eyes have got multiple sight, they have got the unified sight, no, multiple. They see people as different, distinct, apart, afar. He laughs. He laughs. Who else has got the right to laugh? Because we are all such absurdities going around. He laughs to find you deaf, though the ear is near and clear. Deaf to what? To the mantram of the nose. You see, the nose is repeating a mantram. That's the purpose of the nose, not to poke into other people's affairs. <laughs> The breath, so to say, not the nose, of course, it's a breathing instrument. And it utters a mantra. When he breathes in, so hum, so hum, so hum. That is the mantra that the nose repeats. He, I, he, I, he, I, he, I, he, I, so hum. This om is only a purification of that so hum. So hum, that is the mantra. And what does it mean? I am not Kasturi, I am he. I am not Mr. Harvey, I am he. No, 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 don't identify me with uh, the label that somebody has attached to this uh, mass of vegetarian or non-vegetarian uh, <laughs> flesh that I carry. No, I am not this, I am he, I am he, I have come from him, I must go back to him, I am he, I am he. No, you are a professor, no, I am he. You are a miserable chap. No, I am he. You are a beggar. You are a beggar. No, I am he. You are an emperor. No, I am he. Everyone is he. So hum, so hum. Don't lure me. Don't dishonor me. Don't uh, devalue me. That is the mantra that with which the child arrives. The first breath of the child, the last breath of the man who dies, even when a man is murdering another, suppose a man is engaged in suffocating and killing another, the breath goes on repeating him at that time, Hello, what are you doing? You are he, you are he. In the night, deep sleep, you don't know who you are, you don't know where you are, 
But the breath is teaching you this lesson from birth to death. It has been telling you, I am He, I am He, I must be worthy of Him, I must reach Him, I must go back to Him, I am sorry I came away from Him. That is the message. And Baba says, what is this? I have kept the ear so near the nose so that it can hear. <laughs> to the mantra of the nose, the breath, so hum, so hum, I am he, I am he, and you are not hearing it. Then he examines the tongue. Every doctor examines the tongue. Put out your tongue, and then we put it out, it is so, it is so long. <laughs> The mouth can't contain it. it. Examines the tongue so thick with spite. And it's such thickness, overgrowth upon the tongue. Spite. Spite against others. Thick with spite. Prescribes a mixture of dhyan and jap to cure the tongue. He gives the throat the achut touch. They say throat touch, <coughs> some syrup of achus, that is to say God, and binds the lips with a not so much. To every person he says, no, no, not so much. Don't talk so much. Don't talk so much. He doesn't say don't talk at all, but not so much. You say I speak only say twenty words per minute. No, not so much. The other person says, I speak two hundred words a minute. Not so much. Not so much. Try to reduce. Reduce it. Ten words a minute? Not so much. <laughs> Even that is too much. So not so much. He gives the armor to the covered chest and with a twinkle of an eye he wills away your wayward ways. So you come out of the interview room, repaired like this, and ready for speedier, safer journey. He answers every anguish call, the SOS from shipwrecked passengers, shipwrecked voyagers. Now it doesn't mean that uh, it's only when you get into the interview room that you can contact him anywhere. He answers every anguish call, <coughs> the S-O-S. Save, oh Sai, that is the S-O-S. <laughs> if you look in the dictionary, you will find save our souls. That is the last emergency call that every ship has got to make in order to call other people to help. But this is save, oh Sai, save, oh Sai, from shipwrecked voyagers. All of us are voyaging in the ocean of holy life and we are shipwrecked. And he says, I, whatever the hour, however faint the cry, Sai need not travel far, he is ever at your door. By your side, behind, before. For Swami says, in Telugu it is very pleasant to hear him say that. Jantane, Ventane, Intane, Kantane, Untang. Ah, how would like him to say that and hear it? Jantane, Ventane, Kantane, Untang. Intane, I forgot. So, Jantane, that is, I'll be with you jointly. Joint and Janta. I'll be Ventane, behind you. Intane, I'll be in your house. Kantane, I will be right before your eyes. Untanu, I will be always. So I am before you, beside you, behind you. If it is before your eyes, in your home, you, you bolt your door and say, Ah, there is now nobody to disturb me. But he is there to disturb you. <laughs> in infinite grace, he makes us aware of the melody vibrant in the stone. The melody vibrant in the stone. A stone is not simply a stone. Sermons and stones and books and running brooks. Every stone has got a sermon. Every stone is vibrating 
with the divine power. And you know the story. He wanted a geologist to pick up a stone, a rock, and he said, what does it contain? And he began to give a lecture on geology, on petrology, <laughs> and what it contained. And then he said, no, no, no. What is a, he said it is contained some silicon and this and that. What is silicon? And then he said, yes, silicon is a, a bundle of uh, molecules and atoms, silicon atom. And what is its atom? It contains, of course, some nucleon or neutron or proton or meson or they have not yet discovered how many more things there are there. And then he said, no. And what is inside that? What is inside that? I can go only as far as that. And then Swami, and then there was Krishna with the flute. So this melody vibrant in the stone. Every stone sings the glory of God. Flute, Krishna's flute. If only you have got the ear, place every stone in your ear and you will hear Krishna's flute. You will hear the Lord melody in your ear. As a matter of fact, when he was a little boy, little boy, Swami, some people, because he was talking of Krishna, and some people, do you want to hear Krishna's flute? Swami said. And then he said, come, lay your head on my chest, huh. your ear, paste your ear on my chest. And they heard Krishna's flute. The mother heard the Krishna's flute, placing her head on the son's chest. So in infinite grace he makes us aware of the cross that bleeds in every blade. Every blade of grass has got its crucifixion has got its resurrection. It is crucified when it fades. It is resurrected when it becomes green again. And you know the story of Hislop's cross given by simply putting together two blades of grass. He showers the holy ash, his signs and wonders in all his million homes. Don't think it is your home. In all his million homes, wherever he shows a sign or wonder, it is his home, it's not your home. Some people ask Swami, Swami, you must, when you come to Delhi, you must come to my my place. Oh, you have got a place? <laughs> is that your place? Uh, no, Swami, it is, excuse me, it is our place. Oh. Half and half. <laughs> no, Swami, it is your place. Then why should you invite me? <laughs> what right have you to invite me to my place? <laughs> that is what Swami says. So every home is his home. In his million homes, this is my calling card, he says. I am yours. I am yours, I am yours. His hands and feet, his eye and voice, they girdle the cosmic sphere. Then, why need we hurry and scurry from east to west and west to east, over hill and dale and sea and sand, in search of the lotus feet? They are here within reach of every longing hand. Longing hand. That doesn't mean that your hand must become long. <laughs> your mind must long. As a matter of fact, once Swami, some person we call for the interview room, and then uh, he was just about to leave. And then he said, ah, he was doing namaskar, touching his feet. Then he said, ah, anyway, now that you are here, 
take the measurement and go. <coughs> measurement? Yes. See, you find out the space which is required for me to stand between the two feet. How much space is required for me to stand comfortably? To measure and then go. Why, Swami? Are you, what do you do in your shrine room? You put your hands too close and then you pray, Swami, come before me so that I can touch your feet. And you keep your hands so close. And it is difficult for me to understand it at that space. Swami said that. How can I stand in that limited space that you give between? I can't stand upon your hands. I don't want to hurt you. So you please keep your hands as apart as necessary. So take the measurement and go. Now, if Swami is going to give you the touch of His feet, wherever you are, why hurry and scurry from east to west and west to east, over hill and dale and sea and sand in such a road of feet? They are here, within reach of every longing hand. Did he not sing the first ever song, Manasa Bhajare Guru Charan? Worship the feet of the Guru in your mind. Let us install them in the inmost shrine, those feet, and pray, Sai, my Lord. Grant me the vision of thy kingdom within me. Grant me the vision of thy kingdom within me. Assign me the work that is worship for thee. Whatever work is worship for thee. And what work shall I do as worship for thee? I remember I was a professor in the university and I was to retire within about three months. So I went in search of Swami and he was somewhere in Madras. So I went there and told him, Swami, three months more this service in the university. Afterwards I come to you, your service. And he said, what? I thought you were a wise chap, reasonable chap. Huh. And you claim to be a professor. My ego was punctured. <laughs> Do you make a distinction between university service and my service? Is that not my university? Is that not my service? What is it that you are talking? Swami service as if it is different and university service as if it, that is different. Wherever you are, it is my service. The whole world is mine and every one of you is my servant doing my duty that, is, that I have assigned to you. <coughs> Now that opened my eyes. Because I, my eyes wide open at that time also. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so grant me the vision of, the, of thy kingdom within me. Assign me the work that is worship for thee. Whatever work you give, there is no high or low. Lead me to those who heed thy word, satsang. Don't put me in the midst of people who will discourage me. Lead me to those who heed thy word and pine for thee. What is a duty? Just pine for him. Reveal thy charm wherever I cast my eye. Wherever I cast my eye, let me only see thy charm. Let me not see the ugliness, because there is nothing ugly, because everywhere you are, and therefore there is only beauty everywhere. It is my prejudice that makes me feel that it is ugly. And Swami fulfilled his one desire. Let me, Swami, let this, thy little self, Merge in thee. Jai Sairam.
Now, I will read it from the beginning once, so that uh, you may get the feel of it. Now you can do your worst. <laughs> I started my worst. <laughs> that is the defect of becoming slaves of machines. <laughs> Listen to me, ye children of God, said the Vedic sage centuries ago. I am longing to tell of a vision I had, a thousand suns, a feeble flash, his effulgence I saw. Listen for a while, same good news I bring, the God has come again, the Satchidanand Supreme. Truth is His name, love His breath, dharma His voice, His presence peace. He has come for you and me and all that lives, bird and beast, our kith and kin, each of us a role in His eternal play. No man has heard a tale so true. It is satyam, shivam, sundaram. Truth, goodness, beauty, all three. No man has sung a song so sweet. It is Gita, Ganga, Gayatri. He is nudging me to sing of Him, but it is He who sings through me. He is urging me, urging you to listen to me, but I know it is He who is hearing me. He has come as man to liberate man in varied climes and times. When mankind wailed, lead kindly light, he has come again with the lamp of love. Come all, come all who thirst for rest, come all who pine for paradise on earth, come all who seek relief from grief, ask him, to allay the pain, loosen the chain, uproot the parasites that suck you dry. Bring, bring disaster, disease, distress, defeat, and pile them at his feet. Then, light of foot and gay of heart, skip along the pilgrim road, happy, hopping, free, a ring of hills so brown and blue, the holy stream Chitravati, it is sacred Puttaparthi, abode of Sanatana Sarathi, Prashanti Nilayam, Jerusalem, both words mean the same to every hungry soul, angels, hover over the silver door. Devas crowd around the golden domes. The Gopuram, the Gopuram, it leads your eye up and up and up and up to omnipotent O. The full moon hall where all the gods that ever man adored do congregate to welcome Him. The pillar proclaims what He has come to teach. 
all faiths are facets of the truth. You can kneel or turn a wheel, guess him formless or with form, or see him, serve him in man and beast and plant. Sai is the journey's end. Whichever path you tread, he is the guide, the goal, the god. This nilayam is the lab where the alchemist turns leaden hearts into bangaru. It is an ashram where the Sadguru brings back to life the drooping and the dead. His palm, we know, has the balm. It is a workshop where he sets aright all broken hearts and mends the damaged mind. It is a school where we learn a few more Ds and extra Fs in Atmic alphabet. Three minus one is one. Arithmetic is upside down. And I plus I plus I plus I adds up to single I, not four. Take your seat on the darshan line and fold your palms and minds. Bid adieu to hate and pride, farewell to envy, greed. Picture him, his lovely form, and pray for darshan, sparshan, sambhashan. Three blessings he has come to give. Lo, there he is, the orange robe, the flash, the flame, the fragrant breeze, sunlit, hello hair, fulfillment of every golden dream, all the gods in Sai form, grace, majesty, joy and charm. This is Shiva Shakti, Krishna, Ram, Jehovah, Buddha, Jesus Christ. Clasp those lotus feet, hold the softness of the touch. It will keep you soft forevermore. Watch. His finger bids you wake. You are chosen, dear child. Follow him. Blessed is the day, the hour. You will be born anew. He spring cleans the junk that clutters the brain. And who you are and why is clear in the light. He dots his vibhuti on ajna spot, unveils the eye, afflicted with multiple sight. He laughs to find you deaf, though the ear is near and clear to the mantram of the nose, the breath. So hum, so hum, I am he, I am he, I am he. He examines the tongue, so thick with spite, prescribes a mixture of dhyan and jap. He gives the throat the acute touch and binds your lips with a not so much, not so much. He takes the load from off your back, says, I am here to bear, you move on. He gives an armor to the covered chest and with the twinkle of an eye he wheels away, he wheels away your wayward ways. He answers every anguish call, the SOS, from shipwrecked voyagers. Whatever the hour, however faint the cry, Sai need not travel far. He is ever at your door, by your side, behind, before. Doubt? Doubt? He answers. Lock, lock, he enters, decry, he pats you, defy, he stays, defy, he stays, he knows all we have been and are and what we yet shall be. In infinite grace he makes us aware 
of the melody vibrant in the stone, of the cross that bleeds in every blade. He showers the holy ash, his signs and wonders in all his million homes. This is my calling card, he says. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours, he says. His hands and feet, his eye and voice, they girdle the cosmic sphere. Then why need we hurry and scurry from east to west and west to east, over hill and dale and sea and sand in search of the lotus feet? <coughs> they are here, within reach of every longing hand. Did he not sing the first ever song, Manasa Bhajare Guru Charana? Worship the Guru's feet in the mind. Let us install him in the innermost shrine and pray. Let us pray. Sai, my Lord, grant me the vision of thy kingdom within me. Assign me the work that is worship for Thee. Lead me to those who heed Thy word and pine for Thee. Reveal Thy charm wherever I cast my eye. And Swami, fulfill this one desire. Let me, Swami, let this Thy little self merge in Thee, merge in Thee. Yeah, he's